Uh, today we are going to talk about flip flops. Flip flops, uh, they are sequential circuit and they follow sequential logic. So we are going to see in brief what are flip flops, uh, how many type of flip flops are there. So these are the sequential logic circuits. So with sequential circuits, the output is a function of the value of past and present inputs. So uh, what exactly makes flip flop different is that this circuit is dependent on present as well as the past inputs. So it stores a value. The basic idea is flip flop stores a value for certain amount of time. So flip flop is used to make registers and registers then um, go ahead to make the memory. The sequential uh, logic circuits are very important and the aim of the sequential circuit is to be able to differentiate between various type of bistable circuit. By means two bistable circuits and know when it is appropriate to use one type or another type. And this sequential circuit is to describe the structure and operation of simple registers. Registers as I earlier mentioned is a combination of flip flops and shift registers and binary counters. So we can make registers, shift registers, binary counters and many other things using our sequential circuits which is flip flops. And to sketch and explain the features of timing diagram for uh, n bit register, this is also we are going to see and to be able to connect to IC that is integrated circuit counter to create a modulo n counter. Modulo n counter can also be made by this or to cascade several counters to extend the range and to generate a state transition diagram from the description of a prob uh, problem and to follow the flow of a given state transition diagram. Uh, I'll tell you what this transition diagram is uh, once we are into the main slides. And to apply general sequential machine design method to sequential circuits such as counters. So mostly we are talking about counters here, emphasizing on counters, but still uh, flip flop is important if you learn and understand flip flop are able to make many more things and these are actually you don't have to make it because if in electronics everywhere you have a uh, you have a flip-flop so there are two type of uh, things which generally electrical or electronic people talk about they are latches and flip-flops latches flip-flops latches may be SR latch clogged SR latch D latch and in flip-flops they are master slave edge triggered and JK. So all these names, you know, these names have certain meaning, which I'm going to tell you. What is the concept of sequential circuit? Uh, the addition of a memory device to a combinational circuit allows the output to be fed back into the input. This is a circuit. You have an input. Now, if you can store certain value, this can be given as a feedback to the combinational circuit. For example, if you want to add two values, now you uh, if you want to add two values, it has uh, three numerals. Once you add the first, then there is a carry. Now you need to store that carry somewhere and this, that may act as a feedback. So you need to have certain memory to save it. So this is how uh, the first step started that you need to have certain memory. And now memory is everywhere. Without memory, nothing is possible right now as far as computer science is concerned. Now, what is synchronous and asynchronous? You need to understand this. It's very important. With synchronous circuits, a clock pulse is used to rel uh, this regulation of feedback. Now, you see a clock pulse is there. This is how the clock is shown. This is rising edge. This is... Um, the opposite of risi rising edge because the edge is going down here okay this is rising rising edge now uh, this synchronous circuit and uh, this is the clock pulse which is used to regulate the feedback and input signal by only enabled when clock pulse is high as i was ascertaining here that the clock pulse is high only when the uh, clock pulse uh, the input signal is enabled because of this high pulse and it acts like a gate being opened you understand uh, this clock pulse as um, a lock if it opens 
it triggers the gate opens if it isn't the great gate closes so when a pulse come something will happen a gate will open and this circuit is going to uh, pass things but if it is not it will not pass this is difference between synchronous and asynchronous so we are talking about synchronous here so what are these latches first of all you'll understand in, in just my one line will make it clear what are latches are you or can you see any clock here in any of the circuit i don't know what is this what is it i'll explain to you can you say uh, see a uh, clock there is no clock so if it is not a clock it is a latch understood if it is not a clock it is a latch now this sr what is this sr why it is not rs what does s and r stands for this s stands for set r stands for reset okay s stands for set r stands for reset now consider this circuit this circuit is made via your nor gate you know nor and nand they are universal circuits so what this circuit is you understand this circuit very carefully because others are exactly like this with certain moderation now this r is reset s is set these are nor gate now the output of s c there is input to r the output of r is given as an input to s again s is like this but the output of s is given as a feedback to r q is what we are interested in means the output and q not or q complement is always a complement of watch what we receive here this is how the symbol is shown because you cannot make circuit again and again so there has to be circuit this box shows this nor gate with this feedback combination now r is passed here s is passed here q and q not now how and what data or what uh, logic we receive this r and this is s there are combinations 0001111011 because the values which can be given here is we can give 11100001 right what is this q n plus 1 okay let me tell you consider this to be q okay qn and consider this to be qn plus 1 because at this time the clock is going up and at this time clock is going down so for this from this to this from this to this nothing will happen so this range is your qn to qn plus 1 but the important question is we don't have any clock here so there is a time there is psi time you say there is a state at sub certain t and there is a state at certain t plus 1 so this is qn state at state sub certain state at certain time t and qn plus in st state at certain time t plus 1 right so these are the result okay now we have zero here we have zero you know this nor what it gives you simply put this 0 0 value here okay 0 0 value here and as nor gives you the result you finally find out q and q bar it is very very easy for example let us see that you give 1 here okay uh, at r and 0 at s now once you give 1 here what will the what will be the result here any any one any of the value which is 1 will give as result as 0 right now when this value is combined because whatever is coming here you combine with this because this is the feedback now let us see that something is coming because you know whatever value is you are giving what nor will give nor will give only one only when one when you have zero here or both of the zero both are the value of r of of zero logic right so 
what it gives because you just have to give values here 0 1 uh, 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 and you'll see the what are the result because this is simple simple nor logic nothing special is there but why we call it r as c when it is r right when it is r this is reset when it is r this is reset this is getting reset right because r means r has zero here and what it is the name is reset so if you have zero it becomes one reset and while s is there this is what when one zero combination is there zero whatever value whatever value is there is transferred here so at zero one and one zero because only this combination we are interested in one one we don't know because these r and s one one this is called racing condition this is unpredictable you don't know what is coming here you give the value you will you will not be able to find out the answer because the, all the ra these are the racing conditions and once you give zero zero you see the state will be resume only q will come whatever you give it, whatever you give uh, zero zero and you change anything here it is not going to affect so the earlier uh, state will be recognized and it will remain same it will be q and only what we are interested in in, in these two combination in these two combination r when uh, this is zero one then it if it is getting reset or set this is coming one and s coming one only just set values are coming right here so this is the function table or truth table of sr now you understand what is a flip flop how combinations are given then assume so this uh, sr latch assumes uh, some previous operation has q as a one okay let us assume it, it to be one and uh, assume rs are initially active now this is one because we have to have some value here assume it is one this is zero now assume r goes first to one and then returns to zero and what happens because this is the truth table we know and this this uh, indicates a stable at some point and this q what is the complement of q what happens that this uh, when the reset goes active when r goes active this one the output of the first gate must be zero it is if it is one the output of the uh, from the first gate will be zero of course this zero this zero because nor logic if it is one r is one nor this uh, nor is going to give zero value only you compute it in the head because you know how not to table is now this is becoming zero zero is given here this feedback goes to zero now since both inputs are zero the output is forced to one this is zero this is zero as we earlier said this is zero this is zero this is coming to one right understood the output this uh, q naught this is one is fed back to gate one this one is here both inputs being one the q stays at zero because we earlier know that when both are this the earlier the initial value will prevail it will not change now reset goes inactive what does it mean that this when r now goes in active zero this r goes zero that feedback from this q naught this is still one holds q at zero again it, it remains zero you know how it, this is going out because i am just taking these values one and zero and putting into nor whatever is coming i am saying that it is coming because nor is the actual logic so we went here to here and back again here to here back again in this process q change this q chain from 1 to 0 further signals on r will have no effect right this is what i was uh, emphasizing upon that when we go back only in that process when the reset goes active and reset goes inactive the q change from 1 to 0 other things doesn't change now setting the latch similar sequences can be followed to show that setting s to 1 then 0 activating s will get q to a stable state there's various you know permutations and combinations so when r and, r and s activate simultaneously both outputs will go to 0 this is very important i actually i wanted to arrive at this only by all those discussion 
once you give one or one and one the output will be zero zero is it possible because this is q and this is q complement so when r s are now this now go uh, inactive when they become inactive both input and go zero uh, gates are zero and both gate outputs are one again output are one and one is it possible because this is q this is complement one has to, if this is zero this has to be one if this is one this has to be zero so this one feedback to the input drives output to zero again both inputs are zero and so on so on so on so this is the in a perfect world the perfect electronic circuit the oscillation continues indefinitely however delays will not be consistent in both gates so the circuit will collapse into one stable state or another so this collapse is unpredictable this is uh, set the latch this is reset the latch but here we don't know this is undefined right so if you want to make a sr uh, latch through a nand gate this will be a nand gate and you see 0110 one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. this is 10 and this is 01 so nand gate something changes but the logic remains the same so you have to be able to figure this one out to yourself you just have to give the values right right zero which is this make combination and there is the result will be out by a nand gate just have to imagine what nand gates outputs if two inputs are given to a nand gate this is the symbol of this now uh, an important application of sr lhs is for recording short lived uh, events this is an example there are various things which can be done through sr lhs these are the clocked sr lhs now you are talking about the clocking of sr or controlling so in some cases it is necessary to disable the inputs to a latch so this can be achieved by adding a control or clock input to the latch so when this clock is zero the rs cannot reach the latch right because this is zero then this is one then this are going to be active so rs connected to the latch functions as before which we earlier mentioned this is clocked sr latch r as this is how the symbol is there and the values remain same but just uh, at zero we add a line here that it holds otherwise uh, all things remains the same now we have clock d latch which is now latch when it combines with the uh, clock it becomes a flip flop so we are talking about a flip flop now so clock d latch it is the simplest clock latch of practical importance is the clock d latch right this d now when this is uh, some value is coming here 1 or 0 this will be active this will automatically be deactive because this is not so always 1 0 0 1 combination will go never we have 0 0 or 1 uh, 1 combination which will arise this is the earlier problem this 0 0 and 1 1 this is uh, eradicated i can i can say that it has been removed by this what d latch so it means that both active one inputs at rs can't occur notice we have reversed SS snr this is s and r we have reversed when d is 1 q is 1 so this is d uh, latch which i was talking about it removes the undefined behavior of the sr latch often used as a basic memory element of the short term storage of binary digit binary digits you take b from here and um, it from here it becomes uh, or bi from here t from here it becomes bit applied to its input so symbols are often labeled data and enable clock d and c so this is d this is c this is clock this is d those combinations where the trouble was there or we didn't want it those are been removed this is the beauty of d latch Now the transparency is the devices that we have looked so far are transparent. That is, when C is equal to one, the output follows the in input. When C equal to one, the output follows the input. There will be a slight lag between them because you see there is a lag. When the uh, clock gates uh, open, changes in input take effect at outputs. so this is the transparency we are talking about also known as level trigger this is level triggering this is an important word which will come so propagation delay 
the setup and hold for transparent circuit propagation delay is what time taken for any change at inputs to affect outputs this is change on d to change a q and setup time is data on inputs d must be held steady for at least some time before the clock changes and the whole time is data on inputs d must be held steady for at least this time after the clock changes so these are the clocked d latch these are the timing diagram c clock enable input to be this is the clock en enabled and this output this follows input in here these are the following of the outputs as uh, referred to the inputs so let us uh, have a summary of latches to cross a uh, couple nor gates form a sr latch a clock sr latch has an additional inputs that control when setting and uh, resetting can take place the d latch has a single data input and the output is held when the clock output is zero the input is copied to the output when the clock output is a one and the output of the clock latches is transparent the output of the clock d latch can be represented by the following behavior these are the behavior because there is no race condition or undefined condition now latches and flip flops the terms are sometimes used confusingly as i earlier said a latch is not clocked whereas flip flop is clocked this is very important in the first slide i said the dif basic difference between a latch is flip flop is this so a clocked latch can therefore be equally referred to as flip flop that 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 i earlier said as r flip flop and d flip flop however as we uh, shall see the practical flip flops are edge triggered on the clock pulse this is now we are getting into different direction the practical flip flops are edge triggered on the clock uh, clock pulse sometimes latches are included within flip flops as subtype so these are the flip flop propagation delay uh, will the output of the following circuits ever be a one because we have a sub input and other input is uh, reverse so the brief pulse or a glitch in the output is caused by the propagation delay of the signal through this gate so there is a propagation delay again latches and flip flop clock, clock latches are level triggered as i mentioned earlier this will be an important word while the clock is high inputs and the outputs can change this is not always desirable okay clock latches are because they are level triggered so if uh, uh, the clock is high the inputs and uh, the outputs can change while a flip flop is edge triggered either by the leading or falling edge of the clock pulse so ideally it responds to the inputs only at a particular instant in time it is not uh, because it is not level triggered so it is not transparent latches are transparent uh, flip flops are not transparent so this is lead d type latch this is the timing review this is you know how to make this d type latch the high part represent the active one and the low part this is active zero And this is positive edge trigger d flip flop now this is how the clock is shown this is initially unknown but these are the clocks these are the clocks okay at this point something will happen this q will give result at this time some result will be given okay see these are the value of uh, q which we are getting here and this is truly based on the edge triggering these are the uh, points that in different color which is being triggering the value of q so master slave d flip flop uh, the negative edge triggered flip flop is there this is the master this is the slave this is the value being given this is this is uh, one r or s you can say because the, this d is coming now the clock pulse is if one goes c one goes another way means that edge triggering is one is get, getting triggered one is not getting triggered so on the negative edge of the clock the master captures the d input and the slave outs output output it so it is a type of flip flop with master slave uh, arrangement so the master slave flip flop we have this as a master this as a slave so no matter how long the clock pulse both circuits cannot be active at the same time one has to, one will be active and i'll be deactive this is d type positive edge triggered uh, flip flop this is a clock this is d type now this particular thing is giving us output as r s and this is as r d e clock and d right only one d is uh, given this d is uh, 
a value which decides what is going into SNR. So the most economical flip flop, and it because it uses the fewest of gate. Now J K flip flop. The most versatile of the flip flop. This is J. This is K. This is Q. Q not as always, and has two data inputs J and K. Two data inputs. So do not have an undefined state like SR flip flop. So again that undefined state is not there in this. So when J and K both equal one, both equal one, the output toggles on the active clock edge. That is a positive edge triggered J J K flip flop. Most JK flip flop are based on edge trigger principle. So the C, this C columns, this indicates posi positive edge triggering. It is usually uh, emitted. So we have uh, zero zero. These are the edge triggering. So we are only only, the, uh, only interested in zero one. It is zero one zero zero. What if one one comes? It will toggle. Means whatever value is there, it will toggle. It will give to Q complement. Whatever Q is there. It will give to Q complement at a zero zero. It will not change. It will hold the value. So this is the example of uh, JK circuit. This is the whole circuit. We have something is also okay. J and K. We have this clock. Uh, we are interested in this. These are the value which how J is given. This is the feedback coming from J. This uh, this is the feedback coming from K. So assume uh, Q equal to zero and Q um, complement is because it has to be complement. This is zero. This is one and K equal to one. So gate B is disabled. This will be disabled because Q is equal to zero. F is equal to one. This will result as one and make J equal to one to change circuit when C K equal to one because C K equal to one will. Uh, start the things and also inputs to a equal to one e goes to zero this e gets to zero makes q equal to one so now if q and f this uh, q and f are both one so this uh, not q equal to zero the circuit has toggled this is how the, this is work this is not uh, important what you see here what i told just now because this is simple logic. Whatever value you give, you know what NAND is going to give result. So you will understand what this uh, logic is all about. So you have to be understood that only zero one one zero will give set and reset. If one one comes, it will toggle, and if zero zero, it will hold the value which were previously there. Then this is a timing diagram of uh, JK flip flop negative edge triggered. If so, this is uh, clock. This is negative edge. Q will uh, the result of uh, toggle will be J K if, if equal to one. Again, this is a negative edge triggered. J K equal to zero. J equal to zero. K is equal to one. This is an edge negative edge triggered. You will get the value as one and J equal to one. K equal to zero. Again, you get this value on this negative edge triggered. So, what are the clock pulses? The J K flip flop seems to solve all problems associated with both inputs at one. However, the clock rise fall is of finite duration. So if the clock pulse takes long enough, the circuit can toggle. So for the Jake flip flop, it is assumed that the pulse is quick enough for the circuit to change only once. This is JK from D flip flop. You can make a JK flip flop because this is the our uh, D flip flop. You can make a JK flip flop from a D flip flop also. So the summary is the flip flops are circuits controlled by a clock triggered on the edge of the clock to avoid races with both inputs at one during the clock pulses and because modern ICs have small propagation delay races can still occur so the master slave configuration solves this problem by having only master or slave active at only one time thank you so much take care of yourself